Number 26, a frequently quoted rule of thumb in aircraft design is that wings should produce about 1,000 newtons of lift per square meter of wing. The fact that a wing has a top and a bottom surface does not double its area. Letter A. At takeoff, an aircraft travels at 60 meters per second so that the airspeed relative to the bottom of the wing is 60 meters per second. Given the sea level density of air to be 1.29 kilogram per cubic meter, how fast must it move, meaning the air, over the upper surface to create the ideal lift? All right. So uh, what is lift? All right. Lift is essentially a net pressure. That's all it is. Okay. It's a net upwards pressure. Okay. You can also say it's a net upwards force, uh, but without any surface area for a particular object, uh, it wouldn't lift anything, right? If there's no surface area, there's no object to lift. So uh, in other words, you can think about it either way, but I'm going to, I'm going to frame it as um, a lift. Okay. So lift, lift means that there exists a uh, net pressure, meaning that the pressure, let's say, pushing down here is not the same as the pressure pushing up, all right? I mean, I guess that would give you a net pressure, but that's a zero net pressure. What I really mean here is that there's a positive net pressure, whether it's, po you know, now you might say, well, does that mean pointing up or whatever? I just mean that they're not balanced, okay? <laughs> that the pressure on the bottom here, I can say this, that the pressure on the bottom does not equal the pressure uh, on the top. That's all I mean. There's some lift here. All right, now, if you look at the units that they told you for lift, okay, a thousand newtons of lift per square meter. So what are the units newtons per square meter? Or in other words, what I'm asking for, what's the variable that has the units of newtons per square meter? Pressure, right? Remember, pressure is equal to force divided by area. Force is represented in newtons, area is represented in square meters. So what they're telling you is that the lift is essentially going to be 1,000 newtons per square meter. Okay, they're telling you a pressure value. That's 100. 1,000 newtons per square meter. They're telling you a pressure value. It doesn't look like it, but it is. All right, so it, it could be a little confusing because you could focus on the Newton too much and think it's a force. Not really. They're telling you a pressure because they're telling you the amount of force per area. Now, now that we have this, we know that this is the net pressure acting on this particular wing. Now, remember some of the concepts we developed before that the slower the speed, the higher the pressure, a.k.a. the faster the speed of the fluid, the lower the pressure. How do we know that? Think of a balloon. Pretend the balloon is pumped up, okay? You, you put air inside the balloon. You would say that there's a lot of pressure in there, right? But is there any velocity? Well, the particles are moving, but all net velocities will sum to zero. So there is no net velocity in here, right? Now, imagine I cut a hole in the balloon. What happens now? All the air rushes out, right? Now the air picks up now some velocity, right? It's moving. The air has a net movement now. All right, so the air is now moving. Well, so the velocity we can say now of the air went up. What do you think happens to the pressure inside of the balloon? Obviously it goes down, right? The pressure in the balloon now will go down. So this is always going to be the case. When the velocity increases, pressure will go down. Uh, in other words, you can also think of this scenario similar to that of energy. You can think of pressure as a type of energy, okay? And when the balloon is intact, so let's backtrack. When the balloon is now intact, all right, when the balloon is now intact, there exists all potential energy. As soon as we cut a hole in the balloon, all right, as soon as we cut now this hole in the balloon, that potential energy is now converted into kinetic energy. All right, and that kinetic energy, remember, is talking about there's a velocity, right, in that kinetic energy. So that being the case now, I know that given this particular scenario, and by the way, what direction should the net pressure be pointing in in order to lift the aircraft? Well, it better be pointing up, all right? You do not want a wing when flying that's pointing down. That would be problematic. So what we realize now is that if there is a net pressure here pointing up, that means that this velocity has to be lower than this velocity, 
okay? Because the velocity, the slower speed underneath is pushing upward and applying a positive pressure uh, relative to now this velocity, okay? So I would say, I'm going to say now that P1 will be greater than P2, all right? So the pressure underneath the wing is greater than the pressure above the wing. Okay, now I should have enough to be able to now calculate my answer, all right? It says, how fast must it move over the upper surface? So somehow we have these two things going on, right? We have stuff going on on the bottom, stuff going on on the top. It sounds like we have two different scenarios, and therefore I'm going to use Bernoulli's equation to help me, all right? This, is, this equation basically talks about energy of a, of a fluid, okay? Now, P1, okay? So let's, in order to find, just to quantify this a little more, one thing, all right? In order to find this net pressure, we did say that P1 is greater than P2. And I can also say that the change in pressure would be equal to, now if I want to make this positive, okay, that's fine, then I would choose P1 minus P2. This represents now the net pressure. This is now the net pressure or change in pressure a relative uh, from the top and the bottom, okay? Now you can substitute in atmospheric pressure if you want and all that stuff. And you can also say in this equation that you know you can basically uh, try to cancel those pressures or whatnot, but you can't cancel them because the pressure on the bottom is not the same as the top. But you could choose one value as a zero value. And I've done this in prior problems, like I think it's number 20. I could be mistaken on the number. Um, but if you want, check that out. I've done, I think I've done that problem both ways. I think that's the one, maybe it's 18, I don't remember. So. What we now realize is that if I want to calculate this net pressure, I'm really finding delta P. Okay, so let's start now working with this equation. Let's see if we can cancel anything. So again, I'm going to find delta P, which is, is essentially P1 minus P2, so I'm not going to cancel those. All right. Now, the velocity through the first part here, uh, we realize is going to be some positive value, so this I cannot cancel. Okay, now in terms of the height differential, I know that there's some height to this wing, but they didn't tell me how much it is, and I'm sure that it's going to be absolutely minuscule, okay? So really, we can cancel this term on both sides. It'll add literally nothing to the calculation, okay? So the, here's P2, and now what about the velocity, oh, of the second part? So this is what I'm trying to find. I'm trying to find V2, right? That's essentially what I have up here. So let's write this out. So P1 plus 1 half the density of now the air, because that's the fluid that's moving, multiplied by V1 squared, will equal P2 plus 1 half the density of the air multiplied by V2 squared. Okay, now remember, this is the variable of interest, V2, right? That's what I'm asked to calculate. So let's try to combine some of these terms, all right? Remember, I also want to try to find this delta P in here somewhere. So what I'm going to do is first subtract P2 from both sides, P2, okay? I also realize, so when I do this, it's P1 minus P2 plus then one half the density of air multiplied by V1 squared. That's going to equal one half density of the air multiplied by V2 squared. Now this delta P right here is the net pressure. And they told us that the, the pressure that should be produced, right, it's going to be a thousand newtons per square meter. So I do know this value, okay? Um, and so that's fine. And I also, I just want to let, you know, just make that known that this is known right now. And I know the V1, I also know the uh, density. So what I can now do is divide out my one half density of air from both sides, one half density of the air. And now I finally come down to my final equation, almost. So this is going to be, let me just write this in the delta P plus <clears throat> one over two P sub A times V1 squared, all over now one half density of the air. Uh, that will then equal V2 squared. Now look, to get, you know, we gotta take the square root of both sides, right? This is straightforward. Now I'm just gonna get rid of that square root and the square sign, and here is our formula, voila. Now all we need to do is now plug in the values, okay? So let's do that over here on the uh, upper right-hand side. So now this is going to be square root of now 1,000 newtons per square meter, that's the net pressure, okay, the change in pressure, plus then one half times the density of the air, which is 1.29, times then V1 squared, which we said was 60 meters per second, that's squared, all now divided by one half, times then the density of air, so this is 1.29, and when we calculate this, we're gonna find what V2 is. So let's do that, all right? 
So square root. So square root of, I'll use parentheses first for the numerator, 1,000 plus now 0.5 times 1.29 times 60 squared. Close those parentheses and then divide it by now. Open the parentheses again, 0.5 times 1.29. Close those parentheses and we get about 71.8, okay? 71.8 uh, meters per second. Now this makes sense how we frame the problem out. We said that the velocity should have been greater up here, so that if the velocity is greater at the top, the net, the pressure applied from the top downward would be less than the pressure applied from the bottom upward, and therefore creating the lift. So that's exactly what we would have expected uh, this number to work out as. Okay, so that's great. Let's take a look at the letter B. How fast must the air move over the upper surface at a cruising speed of 245 meters per second now, and at an altitude where the air density is one fourth that of sea level. So basically, all right, we're gonna use the same equation down here, guys, same equation, all right? What I'm gonna do is I'm just going to erase some of this work so that we can have some room to actually calculate, all right? So it's the same equation. They're asking us basically to solve for the same thing, just some of the numbers are changing, all right? So the, so the, the net, uh, lift per square meter, the, the delta P is still the same. We still have to apply that amount of uh, lift, okay, per square meter. The only thing that's changing now is the density of the air. So we got the density of the air is changing and the velocity has changed. So obviously we can see now for letter, so this was letter A's calculation, letter B is now over here. So all we need to do is just plug in a couple of different numbers. So it's 1,000 plus now one half, the density of the air is one fourth that of the sea level. So basically let's take 1.29 divided by four to find one fourth of it. And now the velocity has gone up to 245 meters per second. That's squared. This is all under that radical. Divided them by one half times the density of that air. Again, it's a fourth of uh, sea level. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna find now the new velocity of the air going over the top of the wing. So let's see what that works out. So square root parenthesis 1000 plus 0.5 times 1.29 divided by four, and then that multiplied by 245 squared, close the parentheses, then divided by, open those parentheses, um, 0.5 times 1.29 divided by four, close them, and what do we get? 257 now, 0.3. So 257, 257.3. Point three, and this is now in terms of meters per second. All right, so that is the calculation there for letter B. And then it says some note, but I'm not even gonna bother reading it. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I do hope this helped. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. Hit that like button if it helped you out at all, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much.